Here we go, youngsters. Let's finish up chapter six strong. All right, so we're looking at some properties of midpoints in a trapezoid. First of all, what is a trapezoid? So it is a quadrilateral, and then we have uh, base one and base two, and then we have legs on the side, and these are considered base angles here. We also have an isosceles trapezoid, very similar to an isosceles triangle. We have two sides that are congruent. Uh, but in this case, it makes the bases parallel to each other. And when this happens, we have certain properties where these base angles uh, that are, um, uh, there we go. I would say these, I guess, the upper base, it depends on the way you're looking at it. And then we have lower ones. These will be congruent to each other. And in relation to the ones that are not congruent, they are supplemental so that they are their sum is equal to 180. And then we also know that these diagonals are congruent to each other. And so we're gonna be using these characteristics uh, to solve these things. And so here we're looking to find the mid segment. And in doing that, we simply add the bases and divide by two or multiply by one half. You can see it written each way. And so I'm given my links and my bases. I simply add them, divide by two, done. Next up, we are looking at the angles here. So uh, highlighted in green, making it very easy to see that these are congruent to each other. And then uh, the upper ones are also congruent to each other. But in order to find them, we have to realize that they are supplemental. So that's why I'm subtracting from 180 to get that 100. Mid segment again. So we're adding those divided by two, bingo. And then here, we're gonna do that same thing. So I'm still adding these bases, dividing by two. Uh, and it's equaling the midsection, all right? So that's uh, still the same setup, except um, we're solving for a variable. So we multiply by two here, that gives us 6x. I add four and 36 to get 40, solve, and I get eight. It wants the length of e to f, so I simply plug that into 3x and I get 24. Now we're looking at a kite here. Uh, so it's this, what is highlighted in green here, these angles are congruent to each other. In the center here, this is where we have a perpendicular intersection here, so that creates a 90 degree angle. And then here, uh, we're looking at how do we find this measure of angle two. Since this is 90 degrees, and we've kind of formed a triangle here, all right? So we know that this is 50, so we know that all of these have to add up to 180. So I already have 90, so I just go ahead and subtract 90 from 180 to get 90. And then I know that these angles have to uh, add together to be 90, so I just subtract 50 from 90, and that gives me the measure of angle two. Here we have more of the same here. So the all of these angles here in the middle highlighted in yellow are 90. And then uh, these diagonals, they uh, bisect the angle. So these must be congruent in green. And then two is gonna take the same route from before. So we've got a uh, triangle here. We already have 90 degrees away. So instead of subtracting from 180, I just subtract from 90. 48 is the other angle, so I subtract it, so I know that the measure of angle 2 as well as angle 4 must be 42. More of the same here with this kite problem. All of these in the center are 90 degrees in yellow, and then we're going to be kind of taking that same thing. So, uh, As you can see in fuchsia, looking good, 8 and 10, those are also going to be uh, congruent, so same thing here. We have these smaller triangles, and we know that one angle is 90, one angle is 42, so we subtract from 90 to get 48 for both of those. We follow that same thing for 7 and 9, except we're subtracting 90 and 38. Voila. Here, these base angles are congruent, so we set them equal to each other. Solve for x, bada boom. Same thing here. Uh, we're setting up this mid segment, so we're adding our bases, dividing by 2, equaling our mid segment, which is x. Multiply by 2 here to get 2x. x plus 2x is 3x. Negative 8 and negative 6 is negative 14. Solve. And then we simply plug in for these other values. This next one, very tough one here. Top three hardest problems on the planet. So the first thing you're going to want to do uh, in highlighted in yellow here is set these equal to each other. So we do that here. We find out that x is 45. And even though we're halfway done there, we have to do this middle segment here in red here. And so we have to say, okay, well, what value is that? So we plug that x in, uh, and we see that we get 140 degrees here. All right, so we plug that in. 
for our x, you could plug it in either one. So we just want to find out what is the measurement for both of these angles, and it's 140. So we now know that if we add up y plus 5y minus 50, that has to equal that difference. So we know that 40 degrees are hanging out there somewhere. So we subtract uh, 180, 140. So we know that 40 degrees are left over. Now we're ready to solve for y. So we have 40, and we're going to set that equal to both of the uh, variables there for y, different angles, and we get 15. Here, very easy stuff happening here. We're just doing the midpoint. We've done this before where we're just adding the x values divided by 2, adding the y values divided by 2. So I'll just did one example. It's the same thing for all of them. So here, my x value is 0. My x value is 5. My y value is 8. My y value is 3. And I add them, divide by 2, and it's asked us to use decimal. So bada boom, bada bing. And this one, we're just simply graphing them. So just find the graph that has A at 1, 2, as you can see here, uh, and then so on and so forth. We see it, and then we have to see if it fits the definition. So scaling is where all sides have different lengths. Isosceles, where two sides are congruent, and equilateral, where all sides are congruent. And then in our last one, same thing here, we're just graphing this, and we see we have an isosceles trapezoid. And then we just make sure we pick that. 